My guest today is Dan Ray. Dan, how are you? Great, David. Thanks for having me back. Oh, it's good to see you. It was good to see you in person last week. I know. It's been a while. I haven't been to the Microsoft office in probably two plus years. Well, you live I was a long there full time until right. December 2020. Oh, my gosh. I you have an excuse that you live on the other side of the state. I, I can literally <laughs> see the office from my window, <laughs> and I still don't go there very often. <laughs> so you've been, uh, you've still been connecting with people, even though you're not going into an office anywhere. There, you're you're connecting via virtually via video, right? Yeah. So about almost a year ago, maybe a little more, I started doing live video on linkedin hmm. and i already had a youtube channel like you do i think mine is much newer and less uh less videos less views everything else you can say about youtube but on linkedin i discovered what you needed to do to get linkedin live and started doing what i would consider live event production as one of the things that i've done since post leaving microsoft <laughs> yeah, so I know uh, you settled on LinkedIn, but you experimented with other live service, live streaming services as well. Can, can we just uh, can, just give me a definition of when you say live streaming? What are we talking about? Yeah, so any time that you see something, whether it's on Facebook, Twitch, you mentioned LinkedIn, Twitter had link or uh, had live streaming where you are seeing something as it happens in real time that's what i would consider a definition of live streaming okay and what uh and is how does linkedin live uh work what's what's your process for doing that so linkedin live doesn't have the streaming software or the streaming capability built in like some of those other platforms have facebook live for instance if you have the facebook app on your phone you can start a Facebook Live and mm -hmm. whatever happens, you know, edits, uh, sans edits, right? It's it's live and if there's mistakes or am I live and all that stuff at the beginning, that happens real time. With LinkedIn Live, at the time that I started using it, you had to apply, you had to request access to it. And then LinkedIn reviewed your application and you eventually got access to it. Hmm. Do you remember Mark Steele from Microsoft? Yeah. So Mark got LinkedIn Live before I had LinkedIn Live. And ironically, we partnered with the technology, right? So he had the LinkedIn Live access or rights, and I had the software, which I used StreamYard, okay. which we are both familiar with. I used StreamYard software to go live. But I went live on Mark's profile by myself to test it. Interesting. So, like I said, it's you know, it's it's without edit, right? So I'm live on Mark's profile, and I realize Mark's not here. <laughs> so what do I do? Do I say hi, everybody? I'm not Mark. I have hijacked Mark's account. <laughs> I, just, I was quiet for a minute, <laughs> and people started commenting, "Hey, that's not Mark. Who is this guy? What's he doing?" And so I had to go back to Mark and say, there's about a minute of live video <laughs> that doesn't have you in it. And it's just me saying nothing. And that's the piece with these live services is they're not only live, like a Facebook live, I could be at a parade or I could be at an event and I can give that unfiltered, here's the concert I'm at, here's what yep. I'm doing right now. I actually did that at a Sergio Mendez concert two nights ago. Cool, cool. Shared, shared the music with the world. <laughs> Awesome. What platform did you use, David? I have Facebook. I just turned Facebook Live on, pointed to the stage. Don't tell Sergio. I'm not sure if he has a rule against that, but <laughs> I, I will say I was not the only one <laughs> that was recording. It, it becomes an interesting discussion on top of this, right? When you have either copyrighted or maybe you haven't gotten clearance from everybody. Like I went live at a DeKalb Corn uh, Classic run. Mm -hmm. It was the 10K that I 
videoed, and I think I went on Facebook Live or LinkedIn Live or multiple platforms. StreamYard lets you target multiple platforms from the same stream, from the same live event. And um, I didn't ask the mayor, who's a personal friend. I didn't ask the person singing the uh, the uh, national anthem. Na- national anthem. Thank you. I didn't ask anybody in attendance. Right. And at some of those types of events, they'll put like a disclaimer by attending this event or signing up. You agree to have your person or likeness used in promotional videos, that type right. of thing. I don't know if they did that, but that's the other thing that comes along with this technology is if we're not in our homes and agree amongst ourselves to, hey, you can repurpose this or this can go up on your YouTube or my channels, that type of thing. We also have that to deal with, especially if it's a larger company that we're either doing that for or that we work for, right? Are you still using that same uh, set of software where you're recording yourself with StreamYard and you're pushing that live recording? Well, I guess that's, that's an oxymoron, but that, that live stream to LinkedIn? Yeah, so StreamYard was the first one that I used, and I ran into probably within three months a limitation And that limitation was the amount of platforms that I could go simultaneously live on. StreamYard at the time had a limit of three for the license that I had. And to go to more than three, I either couldn't do that or I had to pay more. Mm. And at the time I found a service called Restream and Restream IO allowed you to go to as many channels as you wanted for either the same price or like maybe $5 more a month. So I went from StreamYard to Restream, and I used Restream for over a year until this past July, where they changed their licensing, and it's over twice as much as StreamYard Mm. for those additional channels. But really what I've found is I can still play recordings with StreamYard. So if I don't care about it being live and this is happening real time today, a Tuesday in the afternoon, You know, is it really worth twice the amount of money per month for Mm -hmm. the service? So you're back to StreamYard and you're you're streaming to three different services simultaneously? Typically, when I use StreamYard, which three? The three that I typically choose are LinkedIn Live because of my presence on LinkedIn, Twitter, which is my second largest social network. I have over 10,000 followers now. You're and then I guy. typically pick the third just based on either interest or topic. So it might be my YouTube channel, which is aka.ms forward slash tip Tuesday. And two people at Microsoft are maintaining that aka.ms <laughs> URL for me <laughs> because I no longer work at Microsoft. But right. that was set up before I came back to Microsoft, I believe. And I maintained it when I was there. And then I handed it off to a couple of full-time employees when I left. Good deal. Uh, So this is something you're going live every Tuesday. What, uh, what time on Tuesday, central time? That is a great question. I do not have a cadence for Uh when I do my tip Tuesdays live. And I have not, I think we talked about this last week, David, in person, my YouTube hasn't been as consistent as I once planned because I'm not making money off of it. It's a, you know, it's a passion project, if you will. And uh, Tip Tuesday was meant or started as, hey, I'll share something I know about Teams or a Microsoft product, or it might even be about LinkedIn for Mm -hmm. that matter. And so every Tuesday, I felt like I can come up with something But some Tuesdays I didn't have time to go live and do video. Sometimes the tip was really about a screenshot or a screen share. So sometimes I would just on my phone either take a video or take a still picture and then, you know, put comments and captions over that still picture and Mm. turn it into kind of a video of sorts. Um, But I'd say the last time I was live on Tip Tuesday was probably a month ago. Okay. Uh, It's... um... And these are also not just live, but they're being preserved somewhere. So if you go to your YouTube channel, for example, you'll see the previous recordings, correct? Yeah, so that's the other interesting thing about these live events that we're talking about, whether it's LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. These become something that can be watched as it's happening, 
but also preserved for somebody that couldn't make it live. So you mm -hmm. would get a notification. For instance, if I went live right now on LinkedIn, you would get a notification, Dan Ray went live. There was no previous notification. Mm -hmm. It would show up because we are connected. We are connections on LinkedIn. And you could tune in live, or when you saw that, maybe an hour from now, tomorrow, sometime this week, you could tune in, even though it's not a live event anymore. It happened in the past. You can watch the recording of it. Walk me through a little bit of the process of what you're doing. That what are you doing in StreamYard, and what are you doing in these other streaming platforms? Yeah, so let me walk you through that because it's an interesting uh, potential demo here. And we'll see if uh, if I can make my screen at least uh, readable at, uh, at your end. So I'm going to make the font a little bigger here. And I'm going to type in StreamYard.com. And I am now in my StreamYard account because I already had my credentials. You're doing this all through the browser. Through. There's nothing installed yep. locally. Yeah, that's the other real nice thing from my perspective about both StreamYard and Restream, both of the services I use. So to go live, I click Create under Broadcasts. Mm -hmm. I can choose New Broadcast. Mm -hmm. And if I already have these different social items set up, they show up in the list that I can pick from. I can mm -hmm. pick up to three, or I can press the plus add a new destination to add Twitch or custom RTMP. And probably the very first time I used this, I had interest in the custom RTMP because that is used by Teams, Microsoft mm. Teams, to send a production that I do in StreamYard to Teams mm. as a Teams live event. And so it's similar to what we've talked about. It's an event that happens real time, but you either use Teams to produce that or a third-party tool to produce those Teams live events. Hmm. Did you do need to do anything special on in these applications like in LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, or is it enough just to have an account? For LinkedIn, like I said at the time, it was a process of requesting access Okay. And waiting around till LinkedIn said, congratulations, you have LinkedIn live capabilities. Now, LinkedIn has the ability to use this service if you have what they call creator mode turned on for your account. So if I go to LinkedIn.com and I click on my name on the far left, and I come down here to where it says creator mode on. Hmm. By turning on creator mode, you now have access to LinkedIn Live as well as LinkedIn audio events, which are just audio, not okay. video and sharing. Interesting. Is there, do they still have the approval process in order to they be don't allowed to turn that on? Oh, so now they it's anyone anymore. that wants to opt in, they just yes. click a switch. So David, if you wanted to go live on your LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. or a company page that you man manage, mm -hmm. all you need for a company page, I believe is 150 followers. So it mm -hmm. can't be a brand new company page with nobody following it. And for your profile, I think it's the same. I think it's like 150 followers or connections or more. Mm -hmm. And then you just turn on creator mode and you have the ability to log in to your account and then it you know, it comes up and says, okay, you know, you log into Twitch, you authenticate, I want to use this with StreamYard. And then by doing that, it becomes one of these little tiles here. So if I wanted to go to Facebook, my LinkedIn, and my Twitter, once I have those three, the fourth one will tell me, hey, you know, you need to upgrade, or those are the three you choose. I could say not Facebook, but YouTube. Got it. If you, Twitter. If, you, if you paid more per month, then you could have more than three. Exactly. And I could say this is my Tip Tuesday demo with David G and description demo of StreamYard. 
and then I can customize, I can schedule this for later. And then when I go live with StreamYard, StreamYard also from the browser does the video and the things we're using Microsoft Teams for right now. So that's how StreamYard works. Okay, and if you wanted to bring in, like what is mentioned what we're doing here, if you wanted to bring in screen sharing, you wanted to bring another uh, person to connect, you would do that through StreamYard, right? Yeah, so similar to how Teams or Zoom or WebEx or whatever you're using, uh, Google Meet, the way they have like a particular way to share either your screen or a window, StreamYard mm -hmm. from the browser has the ability to turn on and off your video or audio and then turn on or off your screen sharing. And so you that, do that all through a browser. The fact that you're connecting all these disparate apps from different companies suggests that maybe there is an industry standard for how these things are uh, communicating with each other. Do you, do you know who controls those standards? Great question. I do not know all the details of those standards. RTMP stands for real-time Mes messaging protocol, if I recall the acronym correctly. Uh -huh. And RTMP is one of those kind of standards mm -hmm. that allow people to send a custom stream. So RTMP may be that standard or maybe like a another generic, this is how we deliver this type of video live. Yeah, that's just me guessing, but uh, yeah. it seems to me that it would be not worth the trouble to write a different protocol to connect to a dozen different services. You know, if I'm StreamYard, that's just a, it's much easier if you have a similar protocol and you can just change the API a little bit. Yeah, and that um, always became the thing that I tried to wrap my head around was you'd see somebody live on Instagram, for instance, which I don't even know how to go live on Instagram. It's different than Facebook, okay. even though it's owned by the same company. But I'd see somebody live on Instagram and then I'd realize, hey, they're live over here on Facebook or on LinkedIn. How are they doing that? They're obviously on two different platforms. It might be slightly different, you know, delayed by a couple of seconds. Hmm, but StreamYard, Restream, these different companies are doing that send the video kind of to like how a, a public official might be, you know, the president's address is on all of the different stations at once. Right. Um, similar concept, but internet not broadcast. Got it. Um, now, when you, uh, there's people that are, are just discovering this right now, where's a good place for them to learn more about live streaming? Great question. The internet would be a great place the to internet. start. The internet, is that with an I? I uh, yeah, <laughs> capital, right? <laughs> I came across somebody named Liz Wool, huh? and Liz Wool was aware of me. Somebody that worked with her reached out to me on LinkedIn and said, hey, Liz recommended you. Liz does streaming as a topic that she teaches to other trainers. Oh. So similar to the discussion we had about over 20 different um, services that LinkedIn live supports or has tested. I think there were 21 and there's five preferred streaming services. So that's 26, 27 right there. Liz has a company and works with all of these different creators and, and uh, trainers to give them tips and tricks on how to use Zoom to do this, how to use Teams to do this, how to use all these different platforms so that each of us doesn't have to become an expert. She invests the time in that and then uh, pays that forward to other trainers. That's how you learned uh, is by picking Liz's brain. Liz and several others. So, you know, Mark Steele was there for me early mm -hmm. with LinkedIn Live. I picked StreamYard because somebody previous, Leandra Jordan from Atlanta, she works for Microsoft now. We briefly worked there together and then I left. She came and I left. Uh, Leandra did a, a LinkedIn Live with uh, Donna Sakar from Microsoft. And I was the third person on that and we used StreamYard. So I became aware of it and decided, well, you know, path of least resistance. I've used StreamYard before. It looked fairly easy and it was. Restream was similar, but Restream had a feature that StreamYard wanted more money for at the time. So I switched over to Restream 
in doing so, David, this might be of interest to you as we wrap up here. Um, Restream is based on Azure, Microsoft Azure, hmm. and StreamYard is based on AWS, Amazon's hmm. web services. Hmm. So that for me for a long time was the other reason I chose Restream over StreamYard was that it was using Microsoft's technology on the back end. And I discovered that from somebody on my LinkedIn Live that shared that information, Mike Im, I-E-M, who works for Microsoft, hmm. put in a comment when I was live and said, Oh, by the way. <laughs> StreamYard uses AWS and uh, Restream uses Microsoft's Azure. And I thought, well, there's uh, something I didn't know, something I didn't see, and something that was of interest to me personally. Yeah. Um, is there anything we haven't covered that you think we should get people up and running? You know, the last thing, David, that I was going to share with you that we've been talking about is one thing that you could consider for technology and friends in the future. And that is, besides the fact that you want to curate this, maybe have a little tighter, you know, shorter, less, uh, oh, let me see if I can do this or let me remember what I'm talking about. You can actually add into a Teams meeting something called custom streaming. And so the oh. same things we talked about with setting up YouTube or LinkedIn or a single service, if I get the stream URL and the stream key from that other software, I can actually plug that right into a Teams meeting. And besides recording the meeting, which I'm doing here, yep. I can also go live at exactly the same time. Oh, very cool. So let me understand the direction of this. This is if we were doing what we're doing now, but we wanted to share it also on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook. That's where we're good as, as opposed to recording from some other service and bringing it into Teams. Exactly. So if I go to my LinkedIn profile and I add to the beginning of it, I think it's video forward slash go live. This is the page that I can say I want to go live immediately. Demo. Is, is this where I also would get the I would also get the key and the uh, yes, URL? Exactly. So I decide South uh, or US Central, get URL. There's my stream URL and there's my stream key. By copying these and pasting them into teams. And pasting them into teams. Very cool. This is how we could go live for a couple seconds if you would like to. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> People will be confused by this guy. Exactly. With a we'll donut be right shop in the middle, behind. Right? Uh, can I do this also for uh, multiple destinations at the same time? I have not figured that out. So okay. what I was uh, speaking to you about is I believe what you can do, because this is independent from our actual recording, right? So our recording, I'll get to you. You can edit it. You can make it look all snazzy and put in the intro and everything yeah. else. I'll make us look taller. Yes. But as soon as this goes live and I mute, we're live now on the stream. And then I have a go live up here in the upper right-hand corner. Huh. That sends us to LinkedIn live at the moment that it starts. Okay, you know, so no we're not intros, on LinkedIn no. live right now. We're in the we're in the green room. Right, we're getting probably ready to go in the stage. process of going <laughs> live and it's just gonna pick up wherever it did. I see. And Pretty then cool. now that we're live on LinkedIn, let's say we're live on my LinkedIn profile, but let's say we wanted to go live on your LinkedIn profile or YouTube, your mm -hmm. technology and friends channel. I believe what I could do is in the lower right in Teams, I believe I could stop streaming. And I'm gonna just try this because I have interest in seeing what happens. Thanks everybody on LinkedIn. This is <laughs> David and we're Bye -bye. recording. <laughs> Huge so fan. I stop in Teams, that unlocks my stream URL and my stream key. So I would assume you could give me your Got stream, it. you know, key and URL, and we could go live, you know, uh, two minutes later on your YouTube or my YouTube, that type of thing. That makes sense. It looks like you can only do one at a time uh, yeah. based on the current version of Teams. But, I believe uh, so. We could request that. We yeah, were talking exactly. to our Teams guy last week. <laughs> well, this is really interesting. Dan, thank you so much. I've learned a lot in the last 30 minutes.
I, I enjoy connecting with you. And I remember, I recall what we have to do at the end of Technology and Friends. Technology has knowledge as part of the word. And I love sharing knowledge of technology with friends like David.